All right, everyone. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you may be. Um, welcome to today's webinar on MLP, Minority Leadership Program Executive Activator. Um, I'm going to share my screen and we can go ahead and get started. Uh, my name is Vrushab Shah. Um, I am the Senior Manager of Digital Content and Leadership Development um, here at NASDAD. Um, I am so excited to talk to you all today about MLP Executive Activator um, and share with you a little bit more about this program that we are so happy to launch here at NASDAD. The um, session will cover some basics about the program and we'll talk through some of the distinctions between this program as well as our traditional MLP. But then um, we will leave some time at the end for Q&A. So please enter any of your questions into the Q&A function um, in the chat or press the Q&A button um, at the very bottom of your panel, and we will um, answer those questions at the tail end of this presentation. As a reminder, this um, webinar is being recorded, and so uh, those of you who might have colleagues who weren't able to join us today, um, we will be posting up the contents of this webinar um, in the coming days and weeks ahead. So. You're not, if you're not able to participate or if someone's not able to participate, we'll make sure everyone gets the information that they need. So to kick us off, um, MLP Executive Activator is really going to be a space um, that serves as um, a forum for social justice for senior level health department leaders of color to engage in critical conversations around relinquishing power, program sustainability, overcoming institutional barriers to equity, developing succession plans, addressing workforce wellness, dismantling white supremacy, and establishing leadership accountability mechanisms. NASDAD recognizes the need to increase the capacity of senior level leaders of color in health departments and equip them with skills, mentors, and introspection to advance health equity and deconstruct systems of harm. And so what we're really trying to pull together in this new iteration of MLP is to have more tailored content and tailored um, spaces for senior level health department leaders of color. And we really have been noticing from a number of our peer jurisdictions and feedback that we've received from our members um, around how vital and critical it is that we do have more engagement with different levels of the health department, um, specifically within the HIV workforce. And so we know that this is a need of um, many health departments across the nation. And this is something that we're so excited to start engaging in um, for the first time this year. In many ways, this is going to be our pilot program for um, engaging senior level leaders of color in the nation. And so we're very hopeful that we'll get a lot of buy-in from numbers of health departments um, across the nation who also want to be involved in uh, creating more equity and deconstructing systems of harm. We have um, a large number of folks now who are um, sharing with us also that white supremacy and dismantling white supremacy and developing leadership accountability principles is something that has not been um, a cornerstone of the MLP program in the past. And so we're really excited in addition to make sure that the goals of this program are tailored to some of the new content and some of the new um, accountability uh, challenges that we will be in, uh, including in this, new, um, in this new program. So overall, you know, we really wanna make sure folks um, understand that this is its own program. It is different from the MLPs of the past that we've uh, hosted and that it is of its own right and value, something separate from what we've done. And so in the minds of everyone on this call today and listening, we want you to really frame this as something that is not an addition to MLP, but something that is entirely its own product. When we look at the values of MLP EA, um, it really does continue to center around the five um, pieces of uh, what we want to have as the foundation for our uh, fellows. They include empathy, vulnerability, resilience, compassion, risk, and reward. 
As a healing-oriented retreat built on community support, these values ground leadership development and meaningful lived experience over arbitrary standards of excellence. So what we mean by that is MLPEA is really going to be a space that makes sure leaders and senior leaders of color are able to exercise empathy, exercise vulnerability, demonstrate resilience that's lived and brought into the room, exercise compassion, and challenge everyone to um, take risks and see the rewards. That is where adult learning and flourishing happens on anyone's leadership journey. And we have seen across now 10 cycles of MLP in the past, how valuable these values have shown up and have been for everyone um, who's attended. One of the reasons we call this the foundation of um, flourishing and expanding on someone's leadership journey is because so much of MLP and MLPEA will be bumping up against really dismantling internalized systems of oppression um, that many folks walk into the room with. And so we're really excited that over the course of this retreat, we aren't sacrificing any of these values, but we're only building upon these values in different ways and with different content to make sure people feel um, that they can be a part of something bigger than themselves. And so when we look at the process for MLP um, this year, it really is going to involve um, four main pillars, right? So participants are going to be honing and developing both hard and soft skills that assist them as they advance through their careers in public health and in leadership. And participants are going to engage in essentially four main pieces here. So the first will be the pre-session 360 assessment. This is unchanged from our previous MLP. And so uh, we do see and continue to see the value of administering a 360 assessment prior to attending the retreat. This will give everyone an idea of their leadership impact already and see where their baseline stands and will help them understand how this retreat is going to help them expand into um, new versions of senior leadership that they might not have um, been walking in with. The retreat will then be held in Tucson, Arizona. It will be um, on August 5th through the 9th, 2024. Um, and that is a Monday through Friday. Following the retreat, we're going to be building in new peer accountability check-ins. And so as part of the new content in MLPEA, we'll have a lot more accountability structures, challenges, exercises built in for senior leaders to really act on and be um, you know, checked in on down the road beyond the retreat to make sure that the information is implemented. But then in addition, their growth is supported. And so we don't want to leave anyone um, hanging high or dry. We want to make sure that peers continue to support each other throughout the entire program and then, of course, beyond it. And finally, every MLP cohort, including this uh, cohort here at MLPEA, will have the ability to develop networks. So. Uh, folks in this cohort will be part of the MLP alumni officially, um, and they will be able to network with others across the um, nation in jurisdictions near and far for any kind of networking, for events, for webinars, for career advancement, whatever it might look like. And so we want to make sure that everyone who is coming into this space, for, regardless of the fact that they are um, senior level executives and leaders, still have access to networking support because that support is what will make sure that their programs, their foundations, their jurisdictions are sustainable in the long term. So I want to spend a good amount of time now um, just talking about the distinction between MLPEA and MLP traditional. And I know that's a lot of what folks have been really asking about um, and curious about before they begin their applications or submit their applications this year. And so to start, you know, this is going to be a one week format instead of two. Um, there's going to be specific content on succession planning, partnering with human resources, dismantling white supremacy, collective power development at the senior level leadership um, positionality and surrendering power. And we're going to be having intentional time during the retreat to make sure these big pieces, these core pieces that are relevant to senior leaders um, are going to be prioritized. 
There will be, as I mentioned earlier, action planning around accountability mechanisms for senior leaders and health departments selected to participate. So that is kind of what I mentioned earlier in the process about uh, peer accountability check-ins um, that will extend beyond um, just the retreat. And specifically, you know, we're seeking leaders at the most senior positions within the health department. So we're defining that as uh, leaders with a cumulative seven years or more experience, inclusive of leadership experience external to the health department. And so the key word here is cumulative. If you've worked somewhere else before, um, in addition to having um, senior level uh, positions at health departments, and that total is more than seven years, um, or it's seven years exactly, you qualify for this program. Um, and so we're being very intentional and specific about the folks who will be eligible for MLPEA. In addition, the selection process is going to be a little different as well. While the application and materials are all going to be the same as previous MLP cycles, this year there will be no supervisor interviews um, during the application process. And in lieu of that, there will be a verbal agreement that will um, occur during the candidate interview process. We are also being really intentional about making sure that this program is um, open and available to prior MLP alum who have gone through traditional MLP and meet the selection criteria um, of, you know, cumulative experiences um, that might be more. But, uh, you know, the priority is still, um, you know, going to be on first time jurisdictions and first time applicants for this program. And so I just want to be really mindful with everyone about who is going to be involved and why um, you know, we do want a large pool, but at the end of the day, we're going to be prioritizing first time applicants. Some important dates to keep in mind um, here are, you know, the upcoming deadline for the applications themselves. So April 29th is when we will need all applications due. That's going to be April 29th, 2024 at 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So um, any application received beyond that time, um, we have a very strict deadline and we will, um, you know, we will not be accepting it. So April 29th at 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, based on wherever you are um, in the nation, uh, please be mindful that that's when applications are due. And that's inclusive of all of materials and all of the um, applicant content. We'll then host um, the interviews for um selected candidates between May 6th to the 31st. Um, that is going to give us a wide window of time to really hone in on the appropriate candidates given the pool of applications that we have. We'll then send out acceptance letters on June 10th. Um, that will be near the end of um, the Memorial Day weekend um, and the start of the summer. On that day as well, we'll also send out um, 360 assessment instructions for those who are accepted, and that will be, um, you know, forwarded to everyone who has been accepted at that point. And then, as I mentioned earlier, the retreat itself, MLPEA, will be hosted in Tucson, Arizona on August 5th through the 9th, 2024. That is a Monday through Friday in um, the first week of August. And so again, I just want to um, highlight for everyone, um, you know, what an ideal candidate really looks like. Um, we have, again, all of these um, different qualities that I've listed out here in glory detail. I'm not going to read them to everyone right now. Um, like I said, this webinar will be recorded and we will be sharing this all out, but just want to really highlight that again, it's any person of color in a senior level leadership position with at least seven years of cumulative experience. As I mentioned earlier, um, the keyword is cumulative. And I've shared some examples down here of um, potential folks who, and roles who might be eligible for this, um, for this program. We wanna look for a strong professional work history. Um, we want someone who has appropriate professional positionality to share and communicate their work with peers and the public. 
Um, we really want to see um, expertise and leadership that's been exercised in the field already. Um, and we want to know that you have a passion for dismantling white supremacy work culture and advancing um, health equity across your jurisdiction um, and your community. We want to make sure folks have um, you know, the commitment to giving up professional power and investing in leadership opportunities of other leaders of color within their jurisdiction. Um, and we want to make sure folks are willing to share their lessons with uh, professional peers in the network. And so for folks who are interested in applying, for folks who have already applied or, can, you know, in the middle of applying, really, you know, be mindful of the high level um, and specific as well uh, candidate uh, qualities. These are things we want to see in your personal statement. These are things we want to see in your letters of recommendation. It will really help us understand from the selection point of view, folks who would be really valuable for this and will help um, create a composition in the cohort that is meaningful and powerful. So again, here are some just key distinctions that folks um, should be mindful of and that we have also included in the um, announcement memo that went out to the membership and will be included in the webinar recording as well. One of the things we also just want to say, you know, a lot of folks have asked, you know, whether a traditional MLP, the one that um, we have been uh, successfully conducting for over, you know, a decade now, will be coming back. And the answer is yes, NASDAQ does plan to continue hosting traditional MLP in 2024 um, and likely beyond for those who do not meet the criteria for this version of MLP. But, you know, I want to really highlight here how for years of doing this, um, members, community advocates, folks um, themselves, MLP alums themselves, have shared with us the need to consider a top-down strategy that requires engagement with senior and executive level BIPOC leaders. And so our hope is to mobilize these BIPOC staff across multiple levels in the health department to support each other and lead into advancing equity within their jurisdictions and how we actually see systemic change being implemented so that BIPOC health department staff feel that they have a space, they have um, directionality to move in their careers and that um, their voices are at the table as we move forward together um, to, to you know, help all of the health inequities that we're facing in our, in our communities. So um, really just wanted to name this, um, you know, before we dive into, you know, why we're doing this and, you know, why, whether or not the, the traditional version of MLP is coming back. Um, this was a very intentional decision that we made organizationally, and this is something that we're so committed to in terms of making sure BIPOC leaders across all levels of the health department have and get the support they need to make sure that they can flourish in their um, leadership journey as well as their career journeys. And then finally, before we turn it over to questions um, that folks might have, I just want to share the impact and legacy of MLP that will continue to be the case um, in this program and beyond, we have now over 200, um, excuse me, we have over now 50 alum, not 200, we have over 50 alum now across jurisdictions, um, East, West, North, South, Pacific, um, you know, Pacific, Atlantic, you name it. And so these are just some of the faces of the, the folks we have been able to work with who have gone back to their jurisdictions and really made such a powerful impact and created spaces for BIPOC leaders everywhere to be seen, to be valued, to take leadership and to run with it. And so my you know, real call to everyone here is to apply to make sure anyone who could be eligible, might be eligible, might be on the fence, applies anyway. These All of these folks started off thinking they might not be right for the program at some point and they left realizing how much power they actually have and how much they belong um, in this in this space and to take up space wherever they might be. So please um, encourage everyone to apply. This program really runs on the voices and the applications of talented people of color across the nation. And we could not be more excited to see and review everyone who joins us this year. 
And so now I'm going to turn it over to all of us um, just to see if anyone has any questions. Um, I know there's a number of folks who um, had submitted some questions, but um, I wanna dedicate the remaining time to answering questions that folks might have. So please enter any questions you have into the question and answer uh, panel at the bottom and um, we will answer them accordingly. While we're waiting for some questions, um, I did receive a question um, over email, so I'll start with that one. Um, someone wanted to know, can MLP alum from before the pandemic or so, generally MLP alum, can they apply um, for MLPEA and will that be held against them? And so the answer is yes, they can apply so long as they meet the criteria of MLPEA. Um, I just walked through um, those specifics in the criteria. So again, that has to be met for this pool. And um, will it be held against them? Is The answer is no, absolutely not. Um, at the end of the day, the everyone is going to be considered the same once they're in the applicant pool and we'll have a better idea of um, who will be a good fit. And so that might be someone who is an MLP alum, um, excuse me, but uh, it it also, you know, is something that we cannot tell based on um, speculation. So we will see based off of the pool, but the encouragement and the call to action is apply, apply, apply. The more folks we have, the better, the richer we can make um, assessments about who would be uh, a good fit for this program and we will know better once we have all the applications in. So please apply. All right, um, first question. If accepted, this is from uh, Tangula Jefferson. If accepted, how much time will be needed to dedicate when, when working with the MLP? Great question. Um, so the only commitment is going to be the 360 assessment before the um, MLP retreat, which is going to take at least, um, you know, you'll have to do a self-assessment for that, which can take at least an hour max, but maybe 30 minutes if you're being pretty expeditious. And then the 360 assessment will include um, getting 10 to 12 uh, peers to fill out the same survey that you filled out in your self-assessment. And so that can take some time as well. So we usually give um, everyone about six weeks to get the 360 assessment done. And so that you have the full runway to make sure that um, everyone who needs to be um, in your peer circle who can talk about your leadership impact has a chance to fill out the survey. Then um, you will be asked to do um, the full retreat, you have to be present for the full retreat. It will be in person. Um, it will run from 9 a.m. to 6 p.m. Monday to the Friday, August the 5th. Um, you're expected to not be on calls. You're expected to not be on um, any meetings that is uh, going to be part of the commitment in that space. And um, there will be no homework. So once we're done, you're done with the day. And then there will be accountability check-ins after the retreat is concluded, which um, should not last longer than an hour for each of those Zoom calls that will be occurring. So um, the time commitment is the retreat, the 360 assessments, and then the accountability check-ins afterwards. Um, and a lot of that also will be up to you on how you decide to parse out the work. We're hoping it's not a lot of work, um, but at the end of the day, this is a commitment you're making to your own leadership journey. And so you get out of it what you put into it. And um, the more you're able to commit, the more you're able to really benefit from everything that's offered. So thank you, Tangula Jefferson. I hope I pronounced that correctly. <laughs>
All right, any other questions? Thank you. We have about four more minutes, so feel free to toss in any other questions. Um, I'll see, I have one more question from my email, but I wanna make sure everyone on this call gets a chance to ask some questions. All right, so seeing none, um, I'll go ahead and um, answer this question. So in my email, I had a question about uh, whether or not this will be free, and the answer is yes. NASDAQ will be paying for, um, it's an all expense paid um, uh, trip to, uh, um, excuse me, to Tucson, Arizona, not Houston, Texas. I was about to say Houston. Um, so we will pay for flight and travel, um, and you will receive per diem for meals. So um, that is um, all going to be included as well as lodging. So lodging, flight, travel, and um, meals will be per diem. Thank you, that's a great question. And another question I got um, was, what does the acceptance rate look like? So um, typically we have a cohort of about 12 individuals that makes sure that we have the kind of composition and the camaraderie that everyone's looking for um, and the cohesion and the peer-to-peer -peer connection. And so we are going to be aiming again for a cohort of 12. We usually get about a hundred plus applications. And so um, the acceptance rate is, um, it's not the, it's not very high, but it is, selective on purpose to make sure that the experience is um, upheld and the integrity of the program is maintained. All right. Well, um, it looks like that is everything. I don't see any other questions in the chat. So I just wanna thank everyone on this call and everyone um, who participated. Again, we did record this, so we will be sending this out. Um, and everyone will be able to, um, you know, access it and listen to it again. I am so excited for this program this year, and I'm so excited to see um, all of the turnout. So please spread the word with your colleagues. Email me at vshaw at nasdaq.org if you have any questions. That's vshaw, V-S-H-A-H at nasdaq.org if you have any questions. Please feel free to communicate this announcement with your peers who would be eligible for this work, um, and we will um, talk to you talk to you very soon. I hope everyone has a great day and um, takes good care. Thank you for joining us.